Today on Into the Terminal, we're going to be covering local virtualization. So Nate, why don't we jump on into the terminal? Yeah, virtualization. It's one of my favorite features of RHEL, to be honest, because I think it's so convenient that I've got RHEL or honestly, I've got a Linux kernel. I can do virtualization, right? Here we are at my home lab. Okay, so this is a RHEL box in my basement. It's got like 128 gig of memory and a dozen or so CPU cores, enough for me to do home labby stuff, right? And I use two things on this box. One of them is containers and the other is KVM-based virtual machines. And we'll talk about those terms after the uh, transition. So first of all, we're gonna give you some real basics, right? Let's see what VMs I have running on this machine. And this is one of the things I love so much about how this works on RHEL is there's really powerful command line tools these are running VMs, right? So you can see I've got my AdGuard machine. It's like DNS for my home lab and for my, my keep my kids from looking at stuff I don't want them to. I've got a couple IDM boxes that are for, again, for home labby stuff. I've got my home assistant box running in here, right? So these are all things that are running on top of RHEL, even though they don't necessarily run RHEL, right? I've also got an IDM lab sitting there, two of them, in fact. That's what all those IDM and CLI boxes are. But these are only running VMs. What about all the VMs that aren't running? Dash all will give us all the running VM or all the VMs that exist on this machine. And you'll see there's a whole bunch more. There's like, I could go into what these are, but you probably don't care. The one we care about right now is I have one here called ITT0. Could you imagine what that one might exist for? It's the egg for today's lab. <laughs> Why not? Because all arrays start at zero except for awk. For some reason, awk starts at one. All right, I've got a VM sitting there and it's not running. How do I run that VM? You might've caught on here that we have versh commands for everything. Versh is the virtual shell, I think is what that stands for, versh. This is how you interact with libvirt, which is a thing we're gonna talk about again after the break. So versh start, imagine that. IT0 will start that VM and then, you can even get a console right here in the terminal on that VM. So you, you'll recognize this. This is the boot up sequence of a RHEL box. And it's going to get us right to a login. Now we got to hit control bracket, I think. Yep, to get out of that. So we started up a system. Now if we do a verse list again, we'll see that it's included in the running systems. Now there's one more cool thing. Obviously, being able to start and stop VMs, that's cool. What if you want to be able to, what if you want to change something about the VM? So first we're going to stop this one. Versh shut down actually initiates, it, it issues the, the same yeah. command. Yeah, there. It issues the backend command that would tell the OS, hey, I'd like to shut down. Just as though you had tapped the power button on your physical machine. Versh shut down ITT0 will tell it, hey, please shut down. Now there's another command called destroy which you might think is gonna hurt the VM, it doesn't. That's actually more like ripping the power cord out of the wall, right? If the machine will not shut down, and I've had that a couple cases, especially with Windows VMs, they don't always respect the please shut down. You have to go and be like, shut down, I mean it. <laughs> it's almost like killing a process. In fact, that's exactly what it does, it kills a process. Anyway, so now that it's shut down, I keep doing Versh, Versh edit. Let's us see the machine's configuration and edit stuff. Now you might recognize the format here. This is all XML. Let's pick something fun to use as an example. How about the operating system right here? This OS block here tells it what architecture are we running? What kind of machine? And this is what kind of machine it should emulate, right? What kind of virtualization to use and which device it should boot off or what type of device it's going to boot off of. Here's features that say to use a CPI. Here's some CPU information. Somewhere in here, it tells it how many cores. Here it is, VP, vCPU cores. That's how many cores we've got. There's two here. How much memory to allocate. This has four gig of memory. But again, we can go more in depth in this in a little bit. Hey, Nate. Yeah. One of the things that happens to me is I will verse console onto my machine. and just, just gives me a blinking cursor. Why is that? So that can happen if the machine that you booted does not have a serial console defined, right? With RHEL, I've had pretty good luck. A lot of things with a graphical environment, you won't have a console because the console is 
going to the video output and you can't really emulate that at the terminal, right? So like a is Windows that, VM, for example. Is that serial console defined in this XML too? Uh, now you're gonna ask me to find a thing. I believe it is. We've got, no, that's a serial connection, not the console. It might actually be at the kernel, it might be a kernel argument at boot time. There's like a console yeah. equals where to put the console. If you don't have a serial console defined for the machine, then when you do a virtual console, there's nothing for it to connect to because you're not running a serial console for it to connect to. Right. Yep. And by serial console, this would be, if you think about the old days when we still had things like physical serial cables connected to machines, like if you ever had to manage a switch or something over a serial console, same concept. It's outputting the terminal, the console, and Versh is able to take that and use a virtual console to show you the output of that. So pretty cool stuff.